Gruesome Magazine. Hello once again, I am Doc Rodden, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on-demand horror movies. Each week, my co-host Jeff Moore, Chris Cleveland, Dave Dreyer, and I will take a look at very spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. Tonight, we are reviewing Midnight Mass, streaming on Netflix. Oh boy, this is a limited series, seven episodes long. I can't wait to dive into it. Joining me tonight is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm not saying anything weird at all. No, never. Nothing. Not a thing. <laughs> oh, Jeff. I'm going to leave it for Crystal. Yeah, you are. All right. Joining us this week is Crystal Cleveland, the Living Dead Girl. How you doing, Crystal? Mm -hmm. He tries to not say anything weird, which makes him and even goes, weirder. Yeah, He's goes failing. So weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we love it, right? We love it. That's totally what we want. All right. And we are <laughs> so happy to welcome award-winning filmmaker Christopher G. Moore. Thanks for joining us, sir. No prop. Let's open our hymnals at page 22. Yes! Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm, doing, awesome. I'm doing wonderful. The gospel according to Christopher. <laughs> Wonderbar. <laughs> Yeah, you'll you'll you will get that reference once you see this series or listen to <laughs> definitely, our review. Definitely. Uh, well, we are very excited to uh, dive into this. Um, this is uh, this is going to be a delicate review for us because there are many spoilers once we get into the discussion, and uh, so we want to let you know that uh, when they start to occur. Uh, so we're going to give our first impression. That's how we start off. At that point, we will be spoiler free. Our first impressions will not have any spoilers. And then once you see us go back together and we're getting into the discussion, we'll try to warn you, but it will be spoilers. We have to get into spoilers to discuss the elements of the show and uh, the ones that really hit home and maybe some of the elements that maybe Miss the mark a little bit? We'll find out. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying. Um, and then we'll wrap things up with our final thoughts, our score, one to five, and our favorite scene. Uh, but before we get into all this, if you are enjoying this review, we uh, thank you for joining. And we hope you check out many others that we have on the site. And if you want to help us out, it's easy and free to do. You hit the subscribe button down below or share it with a friend. Of course, there's a like button down there too. There's a dislike, but you didn't hear that. Uh, and of course, we want you... <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you mention that? <laughs> I, uh, of course, we want to hear your comments. Leave those comments down below. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, what are we covering? We are covering Midnight Mass. It is airing September 24th on Netflix. Uh, it is written and directed by Mike Flanagan. And uh, joining Mike Flanagan in, on the uh, scripting side is his brother, James Flanagan. Uh, Ellen Kale, uh, Elon, I guess, Kale, Gail, excuse me. I just screwed up that name entirely, and it's so easy. It's only, <laughs> oh, dear. Jeff Howard, Danny Parker. The cast includes Kate Siegel, Zach Guilford, Rai Koei, Koei. <laughs> oh, God. Hamish Linklater, Samantha Sloan, <laughs> Alex Esso, Henry Thomas, Annabeth Gish, and many others. And the synopsis, an isolated island community experiences miraculous events and frightening omens after the arrival of a charismatic, mysterious young priest, which is fairly accurate for the first few episodes, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, let's get into our first impressions. Remember, spoiler free, Jeff Moore, sir, you are up first. Spoiler free, eh? Um, <sighs> so I, 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 I may be the lone person here, but I absolutely love this i loved almost every part of it there's one thing that we mentioned before the show that bothered me a little bit at the beginning but i i sort of understood why it was necessary later on uh and so other than that i loved it um if you're out looking for um how do i want to say it i what i loved about it is i felt like it was sort of like reading a novel and it was very detailed in the character development and the dialogue. And even though there were times where I'm about the time I would think the dialogue's running kind of long, I would get sucked right back in. If I started listening to it, it was 
at least for me, it was really interesting. So, you know, sort of universal dilemmas of man. Um, so, yeah, and I loved where it went. I, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to say without giving anything away. One of the guys, one of the people I want to bring up is I loved Robert Longstreet as Joe Colley. Yes. I thought he was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. He was really good at that. Um, and there, and I didn't have any problem with any of them there. I, I'm going to say this, you know, I, I know people like some of these people, um, and they're like that. Uh, so I'm going to stop because I, I'll, I'll just venture <laughs> off into, uh, spoiler stuff, but I, I, I friggin' loved it. I loved, uh, I'm going to be interested in hearing what you guys say and, uh, getting into more detail about it yeah I, i'm so glad you mentioned robert longstreet because that was I, I agree with you sir that was quite the performance and i'll have more to say about that when it's my turn but now okay. it's time yeah. for crystal cleveland what was your first impression of midnight mass okay so i enjoyed this i think that it was shot really well um some of the lighting was just really beautiful um in the way this was done. I think that this is a very long drawn out story and it's very in depth and it is a lot more, um, yeah. sad and painful and a little depressing than I anticipated. Don't, don't be fooled. I mean, it definitely is a horror, and it has horror elements. It's definitely horror. It's got a creature even. Ooh, was that giving it? That's think. not a spoiler. Nope. Okay. Um, so it's definitely horror, but it's also more than that. It's almost like it tries to take you on an existential journey, which is fine. I actually enjoyed the way that that came out. I will say that some of the filmmaking actually detracted from the story oh it was very good well for instance there's this one extra long shot on at the beach when when they're all on the beach you know something happens at the beach mm, yes I know, I know what scene you're anyway about. so um literally the shot is one take it's this one long huge long take, and it I, I kept i found myself looking at the fact that it was one long take more than paying attention to what was happening mm, so sometimes people get more wrapped up in the filmmaking instead of telling the story and that can be an issue it's something to be careful with um so that was kind of a little, a little distracting however i will say once it got the last couple of episodes i really enjoyed i wish that i had cared more about the um male lead not the not the pastor the other guy i i forget the character names i'm really horrible with this riley riley yeah, i just eh, i really didn't care about him and i should have and i'm sure many people will but i just wasn't feeling him at all so yeah when things happen i'm just kind of like oh okay and that was supposed to be very impactful so i don't know I, I liked it. I was entertained. I enjoyed it and I thought it was attractive and I liked a lot of elements of the story and I liked the idea of the story. I, I feel like, honestly, if they had cut this down to five hours and made it more concise and tight and not distracted sometimes from the filmmaking itself, I think that it would have been epic. Epic even. Mm -hmm. mm, interesting. It's going to be a fun discussion. Fun discussion. All right, Christopher G. Moore, you're up next. What was your initial reaction to Midnight Mass? Um, well, yeah, I mean, Doc knows I'm a huge fan of the haunting films. Me I think too. Mike Flanagan is a very uh, talented director who really knows how to uh, create atmosphere, create scares, create really cool sort of uh, interesting stories involving characters and how those characters relate with each other. Um, Midnight Mass, I think, has some of those elements, but it's my least favorite of his Netflix shows. And I think mainly because he seems to lean into those strengths 
that end up becoming weaknesses for telling the story. And I agree with Crystal. I think as somebody who you normally likes his visual style, I think he leans into his visual style a little too much. I mean, mm-hmm. he's known for doing long takes. I mean, we remember that first season of Haunting. There's a whole long take scene they shoot. But, and, you know, and, and even that take was very reminiscent of uh, uh, Spielberg's. There's a, there's a take in Jaws where the camera's moving around. But I think after a while, those his filmmaking becomes very repetitive. And I, I, I jokingly call this this series midnight monologues because there's like these long everybody has like a story they tell and they and then it's almost like two people talking and it's like let me tell you the story about my life and then it cuts back and then it's the camera slowly moves in you know and then and 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 it's like and then sometimes the story is just like i don't really care about the story let's move on um the film i mean the the series feels like flanagan's maybe his dissertation on catholicism and death or something and it's like at some point I, I felt like I was being preached to or, or something, you know, <laughs> and and they you literally are preached to because there's this, I've never seen a, a show that like leans into the, the sermon so much. <laughs> um, and uh, and yeah, so I, and I for some reason, the, the guy who played the pastor, I felt like he was doing a person of John Malkovich the whole time. Oh, my. Um, oh. I don't know why. <laughs> Just listen to his cadence. It, 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 it's very similar. Not to say I was putting down his performance. I thought he was great, but was great. I don't know. I, I just felt like, I don't know. It, this, this felt like, it, it felt like so jam-packed with these monologues that didn't really uh, keep me intrigued into what they were saying. I just felt like, oh, this is kind of cool. Let me throw out all these thoughts and stuff. And it sort of, it kind of took me out of the mm-hmm. show. Now, granted, I grew up in a Southern Baptist, uh, you know, uh, life growing up in the church and stuff. So I saw a lot of, like, like Jeff was saying, I've seen a lot of these people. I've seen like the woman who's always pretentious and like, you know, let's always make it about Jesus, but it was always about her, you know? So you have all these different characters that you kind of see, these different levels, and also how, like, certain religious organizations become also very cult-like to where, you know, you, you go along with things even if you don't agree with it because you feel like, okay, well, this is what this is what Jesus would do or this is what the Bible says. And also they lean into, like, there's a lot of crazy stuff in the Bible, and if that happened, would you continue believing, you know, like, you know, are you <laughs> scared of certain things? So, but I mean, there's a lot of creepy moments. There's a, there's a couple maybe jump scary moments. So it still has that element, but it, it this feels like, yeah, I felt, I felt like he was leaning into those things that made his past work so strong, but then it, it sort of like made it more weak to me mm-hmm. to where it made me more cognizant of the filmmaking. It made it more cognizant. Like every time, I mean, I like the, the scenes with the camera panning, but how many times do we, <laughs> do we have yeah. to see that to get that? this person is haunted by this, you know? So, uh, I don't know. It, it, to me, there was a lot of repetitive nature of it that kind of made me not like it as much as other things and just made me pay more attention to like, this felt like he was trying too hard to lean into the religious aspects of it. Um, but it's an interesting story. It still had me intrigued by each episode. It would end. It's like, Oh, I want to see what happens next. Yeah. I ended up binge watching it until like 2 AM. Cause like, I gotta watch, the, <laughs> I gotta watch I all you, of this. Yeah. So I did get sucked into the story, but by the end of it, I got kind of irritated by characters and, and got irritated by these long monologues. Oh, like, yeah. Get I, over yourself. I forgot about that. I, I think, I think if I was, somebody was telling me this, I would just tune out and like, did I leave the iron on? I would just be like, <laughs> other things to what they're talking about. So it, I don't know. It just felt a little, I don't know. But anyway, I, I, I I'm kind of divide. I'm kind of mixed by it. Cause I like Flanagan and I wanted to make more stuff, but this felt a little too just leaning into those things that just made it less of the other things that I enjoyed so much. Yeah. So you're, you're not into that play to your strengths. Um, all right. I, I'm with Jeff on this. I absolutely loved the show. I loved all the characters. I loved all the dialogue. I thought what you guys are talking about, I was so into it. There are some of my favorite scenes are these moments of dialogue. Um, I love the foreshadowing uh, and the whole idea that it's a, it's about faith. I mean, yes, there's a lot of Catholicism in this because of the church, but it's really not as much about specifically Catholicism as it is about just faith. And 
It's really you know, just the, about existence. That's yeah, what it, well, that's, exactly, it's right? About, it's not right. about faith. It's about existence. Yeah, well, faith it is, is about self. Self, and she said it's uh, not about self. It, it, it really is about faith. Um, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it really is about faith. It's totally about, you know, um, yeah, yeah. It's about so, a lot of things. It's, inter you know, the interpretations of, of, you know, the different things in the in the Bible. And, and there's some great, there's some great exchanges between the sheriff um, and some ways they treat oh, yeah. him that I, I really enjoyed his, the way he handled it, you could see the pain. There's there's all these things going on in this. I really loved all the characters, even the one I despise, the Bev Keen. I wanted to smack that character so hard, um, and her comeuppance could never be as comeuppance as it needs to be. And that might be the one flaw. It needed to be a little bit more. But at the same time, uh, you know, there's 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 heartache, there's love, there's loss, there's um, you know, awakenings, there's uh, forgiveness, there's all kinds of these elements in here of, of human nature. And it's, I absolutely love this. And it does have a horror element. It's there from the beginning. Uh, it's, it, it's in the, uh, you know, it, it's not in the foreground at first, but it does get there. Hold on. It gets there. And when it does, it does not shy away from crimson. There is blood everywhere. Um, and I absolutely, absolutely loved this. I thought it was fantastic. I think it was on par with the haunting shows. Oh, really? oh no way. Uh, uh, you've been drinking the Jim Jones. Juice. Yeah. I, I thought it was better. I thought it was better. What? Wow. Okay. So I can't believe wow. I forgot about the vomiting dialogue. It's one of my least favorite things in any film is when you just, I mean, I, I, I like, like the great, show, I, Don't Tell. I, I, there were scenes, that, I mean, yeah, literally, I was rolling my eyes like, yeah. get over yourself. Stop. All, right. All right, before we get too yeah. far into this discussion, I, I want you to pick that up, but I want to let everybody know. But see, that's part hang on, of hang it, on. I want to let everybody know we are getting into spoilers. We're getting into spoilers. <laughs> we are going to be spoiling. If you have not watched this seven hours of the show, you're going to sit down and you're going to watch seven hours of the show. One At day. least the first four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, well, at least the first four. All the spoilers are in the first four, really. Yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, um, there there still are some spoilers later on, but you, the major ones are in the first four episodes. So anyway, go ahead and pick up so, where you. So so Christopher, I think you just hit the nail on the head because see, like you said, like they're self-absorbed and they're spewing all this out, and then at the end, that's one of the things that she said. She said, "Oh my God, I forgot self." You know, it's really not about. It's about existence. Oh. It, yeah, it, it's like, you see how it kind of like, yeah. yeah they but just still, had some, to sit through all that. They had so many moments, and then I think uh, towards the end, there's a part where the girl goes to the sheriff, and, and then he's like, and he, he starts telling, he starts like, oh, God, how many times? I felt like I was like, this is Exposition City. I was like, okay, we get it. Now, I granted, I do like that how they, I, I do like the, I mean, we have that whole storyline involving the, the the Riley character, which Crystal doesn't like, but it it basically shows you that like when you when you get so entranced in religion, how it is almost like an addiction to some substance and makes you do things where you don't feel guilty about doing because you know it's like drinking the Kool Aid, you know per se. And so I, I do like that aspect of it, where the addiction part of it, how addiction just allows you to sort of if you're doing things for Justify. God, it's almost like you're doing things under the influence where you just don't, you don't think about what you're doing. And so I do like that aspect of it. But again, I think, again, we lean into those things where it's like, I, I, those, the monologues are just, it's just, it's, I, it's over it. I, no, I, I love them. I, I love them. them. I, I, I love them. Right, love but I, I thought that was between I thought it was bad writing. No, I'm so I thought it was glad oh, no. I thought it was bad writing. I would be I the only one. I thought, I'm sorry you guys have such a short attention span. I know. No, no it's, it's just I, it I don't care about uh, the dialogue. I don't need to know your past history. I want to know what's happening now and you could talk about how like Well, so that's not a movie for you. Uh, well, it's, that's it's, that's to that's me that's it was that's they were that's they were philosophical dialogues that people were discussing 
where they had come to in their life and, and what some of the decisions had led them to. And this, he talked about faith, he talked about fanaticism, addiction, um, you know, there was some love and some past transgressions and secrets and all kinds of stuff like that. And it, and it I found it incredibly, I, I found it fascinating. And I, I loved every one of them. I, I, I'm going to watch it again, and I'm going to look at it because I'm, I'm pretty sure that none of those are in there for no reason. That every one of those is trying to oh, make a point really that reason. falls farther in. And so there's just there was so many layers as I went in that I was, I was, I don't know. I loved it, and and well, then the interspersing yeah, of the yeah. of the violence and things. So yeah, and to me, it was illustrating the difference between philosophies and characters and their approach to even their approach to the same religion or their approach to you know different aspects to just religion in and of itself like when you know kate siegel and uh, zach gilford are there discussing about what death is it's i think a highlight and i love the scene when the uh, sheriff goes into it because it had so much power to it it had i was riveted by it i i don't i, I did like I'm the funny. sheriff and his I'm son funny. they were probably some of my favorites because he was yeah. so quiet but I, I you know i didn't mean to I, I was i was being facetious so I, i'm not trying to be derogatory i just think oh no it's okay it, it's I'm a genius, uh i don't care <laughs> it's there you go there you go so well if, if you um, like if you like ted talks you'll like this show oh, because yeah. that's mm -hmm. i thought it was, it was just like communication religious. i didn't think it was that well no do it, you it, talk to someone well, they're like not monologues though? they're they're dialogues yeah uh, i have well no it's actually yeah. it's, there are a lot of them just talking chunks about their story about yeah. their religion or their back and i understand there's meaning behind that but it you know it, it felt like kind of wasteful dialogue that could have been it, it just felt like uh, when somebody just, I have, you know, I can do whatever I want. And I can just have these people have long monologues when it can be a little bit. To me, that's concisely. like preaching as well. Like that's yeah. to me when you have a character that's just like going on and it's supposed to have some sort of meaning or some sort. It's like, okay, I feel like that's an ego there well, it, in, beneath well, that I, dialogue. I, 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 and maybe this but show was a way for, for Flanagan to sort of get those sort of like issues I think he has. This maybe he has yeah, it feels like he I has some kind of it's very personal. It's very personal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So definitely. I get that. And I mean, I understand that aspect of it as somebody who I mean, I have a new anthology segment that's very has a lot of my problems with, you know, my religious background. And so I understand that aspect of it. And maybe this is a way of getting to those demons of like all these processes. And that, that feels like it, it is very like there's a lot of conceptual type stuff they talk about, which is interesting. I just found like after a while, it just became overbearing where I feel like everybody had some kind of thing to where it's like, okay, we get it. I think there could have been less of those, I think. I don't mind some of those, but some of them just felt like talking for the sake of talking. Mm -hmm. And that, that kind of irritated me. It's like I feel like there's some, so many more interesting things that uh, could easily be said in less dialogue yeah. or it's very, very obvious what you're well, talking and I, about. So I, I didn't feel like it was preaching at all. Because it wasn't trying to convert me to something. No, it no, was I showing mean preaching, like not in that exact what? way, like what? preaching a message, not mm. trying to convert. Just getting well, that, and off. that's I guess that's what I mean. But you always got both sides of it. You always got more than one side of it. At least yeah. I did. For me, a lot of times what... it was the dialogue was so colorful and, and and engrossing i was i was seeing what they were saying anyway I, I was totally into it i thought it was great dialogue expressive dialogue where a lot of times they're just you know they, they weren't there just to say abc they were they were expressive they were emotional they were heartfelt and um so it was totally you know building the characters and building relationships at the same time and i oh man i i was all about it it was my jam man i loved it i don't understand I don't understand that I can get it at all. So, so I don't understand people. I liked it. <laughs> I liked it. Thing. I just didn't like those aspects. I mean, I, I don't. I like. To me, this is a this is a perfect example of I think different personality types and the way mm -hmm. that they think. So, mm -hmm. um, I, as I'm watching it, I'm sitting there thinking, "Oh, some people are going to hate this thing. It's going to be <laughs> divisive." Because. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've said, there's how many movies have I said? Too much talking, you know, but oh, yeah, can be, this yeah. stuff was engrossing to me. I was, I was, I was sucked in. And I also, and, and I think of a way to say this, but 
and I'm not outing uh, Mike Flanagan because he sent this letter out. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's public, but I was watching this thinking whoever whoever did this has been to some AA meetings because this is one of the few things on screen that I thought seemed like a real AA meeting. And so I've been, I've been to 12 step meetings. So, um, I, I was really impressed. And then later I read that he's been sober for three years and that's part of his journey. So, oh, wow. uh, he had some experience in that. Uh, but it, it was, you know, the ones with the ones with he and the, and the preacher and, or the, the, the uh, Monsignor and the, uh, and Joe were not normal cause it was only two or three people. But when he was in the big circle in the room, uh, when he went to the mainland, that was, that was, that was really typical. Um, well, and, and I mean, th there's some of those moments I feel a little bit drawn out, but then there's other moments I think are very powerful. Like the, the, the one where the young girls goes to Joe's oh my God, mobile yes. home Absolutely, yeah. and has this whole monologue she delivers towards him. I think yeah. it's one of the most powerful moments of the whole series. Uh, when you have someone who's affected your life in such a horrible way, cause you to be disabled at one specific time. And then like that, I mean that, that scene is the powerful. And I think that those moments, I think make the show stand out to me. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I mean, I don't, I'll, I'll, the stuff I'm saying doesn't mean I hate the show. Yeah. I, I just I hate those either. moments that yeah. feel like mm -hmm. even when you look at the haunting films, there's scenes where people tell stories. Like there's the one scene, I think in the first where Jamie Gertz is like telling this whole story and you're intrigued by it. And I, I think you guys sort of somehow, with all those things, you guys are entranced by all that. There's moments I think work and other moments that don't work for me because it just felt, it felt too like I'm telling you a dissertation on my thoughts on alcohol, on alcoholism or this. And it felt too on the nose, you know? And, um, but yeah, I mean, there's moments, I think some really powerful moments between people and stuff. I mean, I, I do like, I do like the interesting way the, the, the pastor, his delivery and stuff, how he's, I mean, cause he's so soft spoken, but he has those moments, you know, where he's torn. I mean, I like that. I love yeah. him um, actually. Now don't get me started on the, I mean, I thought some of the, if the practical effects with the old age makeup with certain characters uh, really bothered me at the very uh, beginning to where it made it very obvious where they were going. It basically projected what, what was going to happen later. And that kind of bothered me. Cause I think, I think with uh, yeah. the Anakin series, usually the effects is really good um, with the haunting films. And this, it just seemed kind of obvious. I mean, sometimes it's kind of hard to pull off old age makeup or when people are trying to act older. So it seems, seems kind of obvious. But that that's one of the, the minor faults I had with it, which I can understand what they're going for. But it that's that's the one there. thing I didn't have when you when you look at something and you uh, and you go, well, that's obviously uh, old age makeup and. And yeah, because why, why would they do that? Oh, yeah. So. And and it makes it obvious. And by the end, I guess it doesn't bother you as much. But in the beginning, I was like, oh, this just looks like makeup. This looks like uh, what? Well, I was even team. I was thinking that even with some of the other characters. Well, yeah, you know, the guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, some yeah, there's yeah. some wrinkles and things that I'm going. Like Henry Thomas's character is like. Doesn't yeah, look yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. But it, but it, actually, but I came to enjoy that, especially with how subtle it was with Henry Thomas's character because. You, where it was obvious with this one character, there's one character in here is like painfully obvious what they're, you know, not painfully. That's it's just very obvious. It's not painful at all. Um, but with him, it was so subtle. Whereas you know, the gray started to vanish, right? And well, that's because you know, he had a lot of hair to cover the bad makeup. Right. Well, that might help. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I mean, um, you know, the only thing that was you know really obvious to make make sure people found out was his back. But even before that, you could already see that it was happening. And the mother, you know, she take. She has the the blood spot, and then she takes the glasses off, and then she's never wearing glasses again because she realizes that hey, I can see them. You know, it's just I love those little elements in here, and and a lot of the characters were showing that. Um, but I, I, I really want to um, steer this into a different direction um, before we lose track of time here, and I want to <laughs> talk. I want to talk about the angel, right? So the monster in here is described throughout the entire thing as an angel. You'll realize it's not. Um, but I, oh yeah, we're spoiling. Okay. Yeah, we're in spoilers. But I love the fact that when just the way they interpret what they see, you know, is entirely different. And it, it, it in through those eyes, 
it totally makes sense what they how they think about it, right? It totally makes sense that they would see an angel, right? When obviously, dude, to a to a degree, <laughs> to a point. I mean, at a point, you need to get with reality. But yeah, yeah at first, it makes sense. Yeah, but they were blinded by that point, right? As soon well, as you but, as soon as you get the experience of you know I woke up and I was young, you're blinded and everything else. Well, but he comes I mean, up with he comes up with uh, scripture to support it. Right? Well, I mean the scriptures most people are scared by angels, and also right. we forget that that, uh, yeah. that you know Satan was a fallen angel, <laughs> so we forget that aspect as well, you know. And and we've seen the kind of religious vampirism type stories told before i think it was it dracula 2000 i think where they made it that mm-hmm. judas was the um was a vampire or something so i mean you you have a lot of these biblical things that tie into that and i think i think that's also kind of interesting how especially when you get the bev character how she rationalizes everything using oh, yeah. uh you know biblical scripture which is what a lot of people do they take these this point and that point and they interpret it in right. a way to sort of Naturalize, well, this is why we should kill these people. This is why we should hate these people. And this is why you're not as good as me. So, it, yeah, it is kind of interesting because especially when you get a revelation, I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can interpret horror and creatures. I mean, there's there's mention of witch boards, you know, Ouija boards in the Bible. I mean, there's there's monsters in the Bible. So there's all these different things that, that nobody really talks about. They always talk about Jesus did this, but there's all, all kinds of horror stuff as well that nobody mentions and so i do like that aspect of it to where it's like if we did see angels would would we see them as being like we always see them as like oh i'm glowy and the perfect well, wings they do but talk if, about the seraphim that they're like covered in eyes well if, if you think like, about the description of what angels are in the bible it's much different than what we you know what we put right. as hoppers yeah. on our christmas trees you know what the, what the <laughs> renaissance artists painted them as and everybody does yeah they have that. like eyes yeah. and i mean all kinds of different uh, interpretations of that. So I do like that aspect of it's like, if you're a religious organization and this person is deemed a possible angel and they're scary, do you accept that even though visually it looks kind of like that? Or are you just like, assuming that like, yeah. you know, like you can't look on the face of God type stuff? Yeah. And that you also got to take into account that, you know, once they're, once they got the blood that they, you know, they see light differently, you know, they, they, and oh, the enlightenment, so, you know? Yeah, so that would also change his perspective on what he's saying. You got to keep well, that, that in mind. Well, so. that ties into the whole alcoholism thing too. You know how you see visions and when you're drunk or on drugs. So it, it's kind of interesting how it's it, they see it as sort of a religious drug type thing, yeah. where you're like, oh, I see God because I can see everything sparkly. <laughs> I love the foreshadowing too that they had with the uh, with uh, um, Zach Guilford's character. What's it? What is his name again? The character's name? Riley. 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 You know, with the boat, the dream, and then right, you know, right, and then what it leads to, and um, you know, you were talking about scary scenes, and the end of the resolution of that arc with you know what those dreams mean was incredibly frightening for me. Um, how it transitioned into you know the scream, right? I right. just thought that was so effective. Agreed. Oh, very much. Oh, by the way, this this the series definitely doesn't follow the screenwriting book Save the Cat. <laughs> no, <laughs> or the dog, <laughs> or any animals oh, yeah. for that matter. I I realized that like mm-hmm. wow, Flanagan's not pulling any punches. <laughs> Well, didn't, you're I think she lover. even said, like, like Bev said, well, he, well, he killed everything, but that was from the Bible. But she although, was also referring to what was happening. Yeah, although I, yeah. I do like the use of uh, the reflective eyes. Yeah, uh, I did uh, too. Which initially we get sort of a, an element of that with the cats because you know when you have a cat and light hits it a certain way, oh, it yeah, creates that creepy that. glowing eye. And so I like that aspect of it to where when you become like, like a, a vampire type character, you, your eyes kind of glow like that, and and. It adds. It's really evil, especially when you're in darkness and stuff, and you see that kind of that eye. Yeah, they have a great eyes. moment in the first episode with the cat eyes, and then one particular set of eyes that are not a cat, but might be. Oh, there's <laughs> one looking through a window that. Oh my god! Oh, yeah. Out. I had to go back and look again. I was like, oh. <laughs> there's some. There's some. There are some really good moments. I. This is definitely a horror show. It may not. No, it, the last couple episodes just go straight out horror. Well, what can you like, say? <laughs> I also like the way it also is a good portrayal of of uh, uh, like m- Muslim characters or whatever and their religion and stuff. I just thought that was kind of interesting, cool too that they had that yes, aspect yes. along with yep. it wasn't just all Christian Catholicism type stuff. 
Yeah. Yes. Yes, and all oh, the name calling. Oh, just. Oh well, yeah, yeah. It's like. Oh my God. Yeah, just, you, you kind of was. Kind well, of and I, a certain I, character yeah, I, I, like, oh, cringy, but was like at the same time, it was like. And how I'm you like, could how you could so, be sort of. Uh, I can't think of the word I want. Be two faced while you're trying to be. Uh, say the right thing. You know what I mean? She Bev's trying to act like she's. Oh, oh well, of course you could do this as long as it wasn't the wrong thing, you know. Which, yeah. which yeah. I love the the juxtaposition later on when you have these characters and they're wearing like their religious garb and it's got blood on it, like the yeah. the uh, what do they call it? The choir sack? Is it choir boy or whatever? Um, oh, whatever the altar boy. Altar boy. Altar boys. He's got yeah. an altar boy outfit, or even Bev when her she's got her like religious outfit. It's got blood all down it. It's like the juxtaposition. It's like, oh god, this is. <laughs> The whole church thing was like uncomfortable to watch. Oh, really? Somebody who grew up in a church, it's like okay. just seeing all that stuff happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The church is very bothersome, but in, I guess, um, in a good way. Well, and I like I like the uh, the difference. There were not all of them reacted the same either. So it didn't paint with a broad brush. You know, this is all bad or this is all good. You know, there yeah. was aspects of both. Well, yeah, they anyway. said yeah. that it doesn't change you. Like they specifically, because the parents remember the parents like. Oh, they the parents yeah, were, yeah. There, there are some very touching moments. The, there's a final scene on the beach with with two characters. I don't want to really reveal which two characters, but I, there, one moment during that just made me so sad. Yeah, oh, there's one point like, get in the boat. <laughs> Get in the boat. Get in the boat. We can do prayers later. Get in the boat. <laughs> All right. Uh, we could literally talk about this for seven hours because seven there's, hours, a lot of stuff. Yeah. there's a lot of stuff. But it, um, I watched it in two sittings. Christopher, you said you watched it in one sitting. Did you do that? No, I did. I did watch it in two sittings. I watched okay. the, I watched the first two one night and then the other five. Oh, okay. like, so. I, I watched the first four and then the last three. Jeff, how would you watch it? Exactly the same. Four and then I three. I was, it's weird. I think I was two and then five, like Christopher. Two and five? Like, All right. Well, that's so y'all. Well, I guess I'm you were definitely might be very same. telling. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All Who right. got away? Let's we're go getting away. Yeah, we'll yeah. leave these guys there. Oh, my. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's get <laughs> our final thoughts. We'll our score, you. one to five, and our <laughs> favorite scene. Uh, Crystal, you are up. Oh, first. is it me? First? Oh, wasn't it? Okay. Yes. No, wasn't it? It was, wasn't it? I was first. But okay, first. Yeah, I didn't know right. you are up first. Well, it's up. No, nope. I'm okay. first. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I, and I hope I didn't say anything. Um, insulting because what I, what I no. really mean to say is it's like any movie, different movies speak to different people. And, and when I say, when I say this one's better, what I really mean is I like this one the best because this one really spoke to me. Everything in here are things that I've thought about uh, in while I was being raised and experiences that I've gone through from both sides. Right. You know, some of the, some of the same thing. And I've, Met, you know, I used to joke about it. There was a woman that went to, uh, uh, I was raised Lutheran and my wife is Lutheran and she was singing in the, in the church choir before the pandemic. Uh, but there was one woman that went to that church that was like, she was like the equivalent of Dana Carvey's The Church Lady. Oh, I mean, oh, I can't wow. tell you how many times I heard her say, isn't that special? You know? <laughs> um, so... It it just it, it just spoke to me. All those dialogues just just drilled me. Um, I think there's a lot of people that are not going to like it. You know, if you're more and and that doesn't make you good or make you bad and be good or better or anything. It's just different. It's different perspectives and different preferences. Um, I I'm going to give this uh, a five with a caveat, and oh, the wow. caveat. The caveat is the uh, old age makeup on one one particular person because I just I can't believe that you couldn't that couldn't have been shot better like maybe more in shadow or maybe something that would have not made me go right away. Well, that's you know. So anyway, and but but it didn't 
in the end, it didn't bother me, you know, um, enough to, to mark it down. So, wow. And favorite scene, that's a, that's a really tough one. And I'm, since I'm going first, I'm taking it. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> the, the boat, the oh, boat okay. ride, you know, the, the boat ride with, uh, with uh, Riley and uh, oh, yes, that, I forget oh. Katie Seagull's character because um, that was just uh, I mean the the knew where it was going, but it was very well done. I think from from both sides. Oh man, that's it. the the ending. Of very this very powerful. Yeah, absolutely destroyed me. All right, Crystal. Now it's your turn. What is your final thoughts? Your score and favorite scene. Okay, so it may seem like I didn't like this. I did. I did like it. I just think that it. I think that if it's if you're gonna like it, if these things hit you, if they make sense to you. Now the religious parts make sense to me, but these monologues, just none of it really. I never felt it, and I never felt really like I needed to know all this information about the characters. But I understand why, why Jeff and doc like it i mean i i i think he i think you said jeff that a lot of people aren't gonna like it i think it's gonna be the other way around i think more people will like it than don't so i think christopher and i will be in the minority here with that but uh, I'm, I'm i'm literally imagining seeing social media of what a load of dreck i couldn't make it through two episodes <laughs> of this Boring, but not, so anyway, I don't know. I don't it'll know, it'll be beautiful. interesting. It will. I mean, it will. You know, and I mean, I think it's it's it, you know, it's got a it's got a it's got a lot to offer. I'm giving it a three and a half, and my favorite scene <laughs> is the barn feeding. Oh god, it was so good, and how he's like. <clears throat> Oh my oh. God. I just oh, loved yeah. it so yeah. much. It just yeah. reminded me of an animal. And I was like, Oh my God, it's so good. Of course. I like the horror aspect of it, but yep. So, mm -hmm. uh, Aaron green is the character's name for, yes. yes. I had to Thank look you. it up. I had to look it up and did not know it, but, uh, Aaron green. Yeah. And, and I should know it because they say that name over and over again toward the end of the show. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and you even see it on the uh, blood sample, right? So. Oh my God. Yeah. It went for it. Explodes. Uh, Christopher, your final thoughts, your score, and favorite scene. Well, you know, even though I have issues with it, I don't. I don't hate this series. I think it's still. I think it's. Uh, I think it's definitely another. Uh, it still has a lot of great aspects of it that that are primarily due to Mike Flanagan, and also just casting the right types of characters. I think um, his wife, Kate Siegel is amazing in this. Um, yes, and, I, and I also applaud um, you guys mentioning Robert Longstreet as Joe. I think uh, he's a strong aspect him. of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but then there, I mean, also I just like, I like all the different characters and how you, how each character is dealing with their own issues and how they go about stuff. I mean, I even, I think Henry, Henry Thomas actually does a very strong performance as one of those sort of dads that has a hard time, dealing with what his son did and also just being mm -hmm. almost like affectionate towards him. Um, and uh, you, you find those type of people sometimes that are hard, you know, that are hard to be emotional around people or to show how they really feel. And there, I mean, there's a moment where he breaks down in front of the pastor. That's very powerful. And just also the little talk he has with his son. So, yeah, I think there's some really wonderful moments in this. Um, some character moments. I just, I just think that I think some people might be turned off by the religious aspect. If you're not very religious, you might not enjoy it. Cause there's a little long, yeah, or if you are very religious you might or, or, or vice versa. Right? Right. <laughs> well, there's people that might be feel it might be sacrilegious, I guess, but I, I don't, I think it, I don't think it's, I don't think this show is meant to sort of like say Catholicism is bad or religion is yeah. bad. I think it just shows you that there's different people that take it a little bit too far, you know, like the Bev characters or just how, people sometimes blindly go into what they call faith in something and it ends up making them do horrible stuff or, you know, go against the very thing that they're supposedly studying like the Bible. So, um, and it brings up a lot of interesting ideas because of that, you know, there's an interesting scene that takes place in the classroom and stuff about, you know, allowing the Bible in schools yeah. and stuff, you know, oh, yeah. and, and the guy brings up the really thing about the Torah and how, you know, how the Bible over years has been, changed by men to take off certain things that they believed in like the 
which I know and and that I think people don't people who study it religiously may not know that. They just study that King James version or whatever version they have. So I don't know somebody who grew up Southern Baptist. I could definitely there was parts of this I could definitely relate to, and it's something I fight with a lot because I have very religious family and and uh, i have my own issues with it and stuff i had issues with people in the church that kind of turned me off just how people are just so religious you know like they let a guy go he was like the 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 music guy at the church because he got divorced you know i mean oh. hmm. i mean it's horrible how people are treated just because of things that are just going to happen you know so anyway um i just have certain i, I guess my problem is he he hits hard on his strengths to where they become a little bit too obvious um to where there's shots that are repetitive or it's back and forth the camera pushes in when they're having these long talks and it just it seems extremely repetitive and it kind of takes away from the experience for me so i don't hate it i enjoyed it uh but i don't enjoy it as much as i love i love the haunting ones they're mm -hmm. they're perfection in my opinion especially the first this one is it's a little bit a little bit more imperfect to me but it still has those really strong aspects of it that make it better than a lot of other shows out there so um and visually he does really cool stuff even though he kind of repeats himself throughout this series um so I, i'll give it a i'll give it a little bit higher than crystal i'll give it 3.75 um i still enjoyed it um i just feel like some of the writing got a little bit more about him trying to get stuff out that didn't just felt like it was a little too much. And I'm, I feel this, this, this show is sort of like Ari Aster meets Stephen King, you know, mm -hmm. it has a little bit of needful things and Salem lot in it. And it also has a lot of those personal aspects, uh, personal issues that people have, like they have in Ari Aster films where there's, and I like slow burns normally. And I think this is definitely a slow burn series that some people might get turned off by the slow burniness of it. But overall, I think it's, I think it's a good series. I think it just, it wears its, it's uh, specific issues on its sleeve a little too much that kind of bother me at points. Um, as for favorite scene, I mentioned it earlier. I think the confrontation between um, the young girl and, and Joe uh, about her feelings towards him when she sort of becomes healed from her injuries that he caused. And then his response to where he's just like breaking down in front of her. Such a, it's a, one of the most powerful scenes I think in the whole series and so that scene, I think I was like, that's when I was like entranced by everything. Like you guys said, you, you were through that throughout that scene. I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so powerful. Um, that deserves a Emmy nomination right there. Uh, yeah, it was absolutely that. fantastic. So that's my favorite scene in this series. Yeah, yeah the, the power of forgiveness just, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. It absolutely changed that character. Um, you know, and he showed up at the, you know, at the, AA meetings after that. And it was just, that character is so rich because of that, so tortured. Um, yeah, I, he, he became my favorite character in the show because of that scene. And it's also my favorite scene, but I'll pick another for my favorite scene. Um, that that really, that that just about destroyed me. It is. That, that scene, I was totally riveted and totally just gut punched. That was, I was, like, I was like, I was like, oh. <laughs> Um, no pun intended. Um, I I love this 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 series. It it spoke to me in a way I wasn't expecting it to. It um you know it, it had a lot to offer to explore different uh, aspects of faith and religion and, and human nature and all kinds of things and and to me it all supported that and I was in every element of it you know when you know whether it was bev and her nonsense or whether it was you know aaron green talking about you know the loss of you know her child so spoilers um i i yeah i just really loved it and it, you I, I like that you mentioned that it felt like you know this a cross between ari Aster and, and stephen king to me i thought it was very much influenced by stephen king you could feel the influence this, this could happen in maine just as easily as it could mm -hmm. where you know i think it was off the coast of uh uh seattle right or somewhere over that way i'm not sure really really was and uh but it, it really could have been set in, in stephen king land and you wouldn't doubt that's interesting that. Felt like New England, but yeah, yeah I, I assume New England, but uh, yeah. I, I thought I've done that before. 
I have no idea, to be honest with you. Um, but at the same time, I just, I, man, I just, from I was into it from the very beginning when they went to the island and you start seeing all the eyes. I loved how they were approaching, you know, this mystery. And we, we don't, it doesn't rely on, you know, the horror aspects. And yet it's still a very horror driven tale. It, it's a different kind of horror. And it's just the, you know, they're not, the character isn't seeing the horror of it until later. And then when he does see the horror, it's, you know, the, the Monsignor, it's, it's, it's very, um, he, he basically changes once he figure you know, when he sees that he sees the error in his ways, if you will, uh, revelation. Um, he, uh, just the interpretation of, you know, of what they think an angel, you know, they think of it as an angel. And then when it shows up, Oh my God, that was, so if I can't have the, uh, Oh, my, uh, before I get, well, I'll go ahead and do my favorite scene. If I can't have the scene with Joe, I'll, I'll take the scene when the, uh, the, Angel shows up at the um, at the at the uh, the midnight mass, literally the midnight mass for Easter, yeah. right? And um, and just the, everybody's reaction that you know they weren't they were scared, but they weren't. It wasn't horrible. You know they didn't run, right? They weren't like running away. They were like, "What is this?" Right? Um, you know, it changes. Of, you know, when the sheriff stands up, but it uh yeah just or no well it's not the, it's the sheriff and the uh and um and the other and uh mildred right the mildred actually does the act right so it, to me it's just i don't know i i, I really love this i'm i'm gonna give 475 i will i will concede wow. that hmm. yeah i will concede that haunting of hill house which i gave a five is 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 better because of just just how intricate and well roven and, and surprising it was where this one doesn't hide the surprises it actually lays them out there for you to discover whenever you wish and i kind of relished in the fact that the reveals you know just it just felt like it was just perfectly paced and perfectly set up and i really really loved it so 4.75 excellent okay. and just to go back on something we, we just said it was filmed in british columbia so um I don't, I don't know where the t town was supposed to be located. And I, I got to mention Annabeth Gish. I love Annabeth Gish. And she's uh, she grew up in Cedar Falls, Iowa, where I lived, with, where I grew up when I was a kid. Oh. Yeah. They, they, I, 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 I got to mention um, Iowa Connections. I, I always have to do that. So. <laughs> I, I have no idea. They say Crockett Island, but they don't never say where they never say where Crockett Island is, and, at least in the reference material I have. But I got West Coast, but it could be easily East Coast. It could be, who knows? It, it didn't matter really because the isolation yeah. of the island Some was random important. Island. Right, and, right. And, right. And, oh, I uh, just realized I was confusing Annabeth Gish with Jamie Gertz. <laughs> were you? Oh, I oh, is that, that, that what you meant? Yeah. I think that's what I meant earlier. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. Annabeth oh, Gish. Oh, 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 okay. I, I apologize I for these people you. that are screaming at this video. You know what you're talking about. I, I always get those two actors confused, but um, yeah, I think she's great, and, and you know, and. And also how they sort of like introduce how her character is is like a gay character without oh, yeah. you over the head with it. Never, right. never, yeah, never do. Never ever, even after they they don't belabor the point. So yeah, there's a lot well, of things going on. Like actually, that. that whole thing with her parents is my favorite. Although I do I do yeah. like it. This is really very spoilery, but at the end when they try to <laughs> transform her, she's like, no. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> yes, yes. I was I'm like, never coming back here again. I was like, damn. <laughs> I'm like a boss. Oh, that that Annabeth. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. That was. Uh, I was thinking I, of the mother too when she stalks out of the. Uh, church. Oh well, the mother. Yeah, she's like, mm, that's not my preacher. That's yeah. My <laughs> See if I come back here again. again. I don't know that. I uh, the the final scene with the sheriff and his son. Just you know, they're they're you know, it was shot from behind. You see the sunrise coming up, and he just wait. What? Oh, uh, oh, uh, no, too no. too far spoilery. No, too very sir. Spoilery. No, sir. Too but, far. You go uh, too far, sir. I went too far. 
but it was just like it, I was just like it oh, was. I like that too. I, I literally screamed out nice, no when, yeah. when it happened. Uh, I, somehow I wanted it. They were my favorite because yeah. they were all they had left. Oh. Sorry, oh, I just well, well, my mic. Well, 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 well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's, uh, that is our review. Right. Mass. It is streaming now on Netflix. My Flynn gets at it again with another limited series. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he cooks up next. Oh, my. Uh, I think we probably know, but I can't bring it to my from the lobe at this moment to share. What's but he <laughs> right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but Crystal, Jeff. And Christopher, thank you for joining me. This was thanks fun. for having. Us. Thank you all. Great discussion. Great discussion. Yeah, yes, it, it's yeah. always different opinions and different ideas of things. Art is subjective, and it's great that we can all sort of come together and bring our, our own opinions on I'm so cool glad stuff. Christopher and Christopher joined us, though, because otherwise, yeah, thanks for yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think Jeff was afraid he was going to be in his own boat, right? Ah, uh, um, I, 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 Doc did not tip me at all. He just asked me if I watched it. And what did you think? And I told him, and he never replied. So I didn't. Yeah, but I knew he loved it because last time he's like, oh, it's so good. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're just going to be waiting to watch the next one. Was I wrong about that? <laughs> all right. Uh, let's, let's say goodnight. <laughs> goodnight. <laughs> goodnight, everybody. <laughs>